Welcome back everyone, Toysh is here, and I am back yet again for yet another DCAU video. And today comes courtesy of my friends over at McFarlane Toys. We have an early look at their brand new, the new, new Batman Adventures reissues featuring this Girls Night Out three pack. They're not double dipping. They're not putting Batgirl and Harley Quinn in there. It's just the three we were missing. So like I said, from the new Batman Adventures from the episode Girls Night Out, we have Poison Ivy, Livewire, and Supergirl. And as you can clearly see, all three in that nice window box packaging. It's always nice to see all the old DCAU artwork. It's glorious. It still looks good to this day. It brings a smile to my face. And here's the barcode. Now, like I said, this is an Amazon exclusive, and I will put a link down in the description below if you are interested in grabbing it. And as I previously mentioned, this comes from the TNBA episode, Girls Night Out. And I remember this episode premiering. It was always wild when you were having all the various team ups, especially with the villains now, with Live Wire coming to Gotham, teaming up with Poison Ivy and Harley Quinn. And of course, they take on Supergirl and Batgirl because, alas, both Batman and Superman just happen to be out of town when this happens. But regardless, this is going to be an absolute blast. So sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee. This is a look at the brand Brand new reissues of the new new Batman Adventures, the Amazon exclusive gold label three pack Girls Night Out by McFarlane Toys. And right before we get started, I just want to say a quick thank you to everyone who continues to tune in to my DCAU videos. I absolutely love making these, love talking about Batman Adventures, TNBA, Batman Beyond, Justice League, Justice League Unlimited, the whole DCAU lineup, and I can't believe in 2024. We're still getting toys off these awesome cartoons. And so now here's everything taken out of the packaging. And as you can clearly see, three figures, three TNBA stands, a dozen hands, and one accessory between the three of them. However, there is one other pack-in, which are these reproduction animated cell frames. They're cool. They're cool-ish, we'll just say. On the back, they give you all the episode details. Of course, this being Girls' Night Out premiered October 17th, 1998. That is crazy to me. You also get one for Poison Ivy and, of course, Live Wire. They're well done. Don't get me wrong. They are a nice backdrop to the figures if you want to display them. However, as always, I would love more accessories, physical plastic things, than just this type. But, in terms of looking at the figures, I'm going to tell you again, there are a lot of hands. So Livewire comes with various outstretched hands, it's like she is using her powers. Thankfully, she does come with an electrical effect, or at least I think it is. Now, this could kind of go either way here. It's kind of lightning, and it also kind of looks plant related. You simply just kind of attach it through her hand, put the hand through the power and into the wrist. That's how I found it works best. It's okay. Now, as I said, it kind of looks like poison ivy, kind of thorny stuff. So if it was green, I could see poison ivy using this too. But since it's blue, yeah, sure, we'll give it to live wire. It's okay. Now, in terms of live wire herself, it's always great to have an action figure representation of this S test figure. From far away, she looks great. When you get up close, that's when you're going to kind of see that the paint just isn't that great. And it seems to be a reoccurring theme with all these reissues, Batman animated or TNBA or otherwise. Some of the lines, like on her costume right here on the legs, gets very muddled. On the lines for her electrical bolts right there on her chest, yeah, they're pretty straight. The paint on the head portrait, I think, works out the best. You have the blue of her hair. She's got nice eyes, nice smile, the white of her skin. That's all well and good. It's just some of the line work and those very fine little details of her costume. That's when it gets muddled, unfortunately. These characters, these figures, have very teeny tiny proportions. Think of that working in an action figure form. DC Collectibles, DC Direct did a fairly decent job in articulating these. You don't want to break it up too much, but it's going to have the exact same articulation as the previously released figure. Some of it may be kind of antiquated, some of it may be kind of wonky, hence the legs right here. And just to point out, she is largely an all pinless figure until you get down to her ankles where she 
has a giant pin right there, unfortunately. The rest of her looks pretty darn cool. Is it a good figure? It's okay. I just feel like they're not doing their best work in the reissues of these really cool figures. And if you have the originals, you really have nothing to worry about because you have the superior ones. And it's the same thing with Poison Ivy. A dozen hands with nothing to hold, nothing to come with, not even beakers or anything like the last release. Poison Ivy herself, this is where I'm going to say it detracts from the fun of this design. Now, they've done a great job at capturing this. This is not McFarlane's fault. The sculpts are DC Collectibles DC Direct from let's say eight to 10 years ago. These will now be judged on how McFarlane has reissued them. How is the paint? If you look at the head portrait, she has a giant head. That's not McFarlane's fault. The greens, the skin color, the paint on the eyes, their hair, that would be where I get to judge them. And I think that it's entirely muted, especially around the eyes where she looks tired. It looks like the paint is off in some sense. The eyes don't look good at all. Unless you're looking at her from an upwards position, then it looks fairly normal. But straight ahead, she looks bored. She looks tired. She looks sleepy. It looks odd. So no, they didn't do a good job in that sense. Again, it's going to be the same exact articulation. They've not changed anything. Just to point out, for those of you who need to know or should be in the know, when a company reissues something, very rarely do they ever change anything. So it's up for you to decide. Do you want this? This is all old stuff being repurposed and sold to you perhaps again, perhaps for the first time, much like myself. But no, very rarely do they ever make any necessary changes. And that is unfortunate. So you kind of have to think about it and go, okay, well, I see what he's saying. Do I like this? Do I like it for the reasons that I love the cartoon? And that's where I'm at. But no, they've really not done a good job in once again, reissuing these. And then to kind of finalize it with Supergirl. Again, ton of extra hands. Flight hands, sure, that works for Supergirl. A little bit more leniency there because what accessories do you really give to Supergirl in that sense, unless you want to give her an extra head portrait, like the Kara disguise with glasses, could have done that. But no, they're just going to reissue the exact same thing as was done before. Same thing with the paint. It kind of is muddled in some areas. You have the red cape, which sure, that looks good. The skirt piece is kind of like a vinyl plastic down to her shoes, which... Those can get kind of loose, unfortunately. The legs are very much hindered by her blue skirt, so just keep that in mind. They're really not going to do much unless you're kind of moving them forward, moving them back a little bit just to kind of get her in that Bruce Tim sketch pose. I will tell you through and through, be careful with the limbs and be careful when swapping out the hands. They're very itty bitty, tiny little joints, tiny little pieces. I didn't have any problems. It seems like the plastic is a little bit more malleable. You want to play with these as opposed to the original releases being very much art pieces. So keep that in mind. The paint is not as vibrant. And again, playing with these, you shouldn't have a problem breaking anything, but keep that in mind when moving these tiny little joints, tiny little pieces, you don't want to overexert anything. Learn the articulation before you go full throttle. What's fun though, and this is where I go, okay, that's nostalgia, is that you can have a lot of fun with these on your shelf. Case in point, flying around Gotham City with Supergirl and Batgirl. The one thing to point out, though, is that they really didn't keep scale in mind with some of these things. So, yes, yeah, Supergirl looks like she was stung by a bee and she's got a really large head. And you can barely stand Batgirl sometimes, just FYI. But from far away, sure, they stand together, okay? And it's the same deal with Harley, Livewire, and Poison Ivy. Again, I'm glad they didn't double dip, release the five pack. It's the three we were missing from other reissues by McFarlane Toys, but it has that Supergirl head thing going on. So Poison Ivy has a large dome, then you got Livewire with a medium dome, and then you got Harley Quinn here with a small dome. And yes, Harley can be BTAS or TNBA. It kind of goes either way. It's less of a redesign with TNBA. But in standing Supergirl and Batgirl with TNBA Batman, sure, that works. That's fine. It's still the scaling issues of the head portraits, but all the various villains, sure, Again, he really wasn't in the episode unless just to contact Supergirl, but there you go. That's all three for you. So that is going to wrap it up for my quick look at the brand new, new Batman Adventures, the Girls' Night Out three-pack featuring Poison Ivy, Livewire, and Supergirl. This is one of those where I'm going to tell you again, 
I look at it in terms of, yes, it's very nostalgic. Did I order this before McFarland sent it out? Yes, I did. I was going to get it. It's not fantastic. It's not the best they could be doing, but at least Livewire has an accessory. That's <laughs> multiple hands for nothing. We see it all the time with the BTAS reissues at Target. You got to do better, McFarland Toys. You got to actually make it worth our while with all these extra hands. What are they for? We can't do guns because of Warner Brothers. You got to figure something out because these characters, these designs certainly deserve better. So, You've heard my thoughts, and now I'm curious to know yours. Comment below, let me know. Let's talk everything TNBA, and I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food, but most important, remember, again, going forward, just put in a little bit extra chutzpah, paint especially. They need to look better than how these came out and how most of the line is coming out. More paint, more accessories. You can do it. And when you do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.